A very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part two, starting the rebuild. And here's the engine on the bench, looking dirtier than ever. I think it's time to remove the flywheel. There's a bit of a problem here though. I cannot see any kind of a grub screw or fastening that holds it to the crankshaft. And it's spinning on the crankshaft and with a bit of movement back and forth, I managed to slide it off the crankshaft. So how was it held on there in the first place? The flywheel is very accurately machined and it's a good fit on the crankshaft. It was only difficult to remove it when I got to the end of the crankshaft which is quite rusty. I'll speed this clip up a bit because it took quite a long time. But eventually the flywheel finally parted company with the crankshaft. I've put the engine in a plastic tub and I'm currently pouring cellulose thinners into the plastic tub and all over the engine. And just in case you don't know, cellulose thinners is known as lacquer thinner in the USA. Usual health and safety warning, when using solvents, always use them in a very well ventilated area. My workbench is next to a wide open door, and this door leads to the outer part of the workshop, which is right next to a fully wide open garage door. So ventilation is good, but please be warned, doing this job in a confined space is not a good idea. In this clip, I'm using my electric toothbrush. This idea was suggested to me by a viewer called Marek, and it's a really, really good idea. Look how it cuts through the grease and the grime and the paint. It removes the paint, but only because it's in a bath of solvent that is dissolving the paint. And unlike a normal toothbrush, which is what I used to do, which splashes the cellulose thinners about, this doesn't. It keeps it in one place. When I first tried out this electric toothbrush idea, I wasn't sure whether it was going to work, but I wasn't using any solvent. You definitely need some kind of a lubricant. If you use it dry, all it does is spreads the grease and grime over a different area of the model. And as I've mentioned before, if you're going to buy one of these electric toothbrushes, buy a more expensive rechargeable one, because the batteries don't last very long. And as I've mentioned before, always buy a spare head with the toothbrush, so you can clean your teeth with it. This is the rusty flywheel and most of the paint seems to have gone anyway, but I'm going to put this in the tub with the engine. And now in the outer part of the workshop I'm going to leave this for 24 hours, and I'm using another tub as a lid to stop it from evaporating. And the next day, it's time to clean it up. It's been in the cellulose thinners for 24 hours, so all the grease, grime and paint is very loose, and it's coming off beautifully with this toothbrush. Once again, I've speeded up the video because it's a very slow, tedious job, is this really? The electric toothbrush will not fit in every area of the engine. So for the more inaccessible areas, I'm using a long, thin, stiff paintbrush, followed by a smaller paintbrush. Many people have given me warnings about putting my fingers in cellulose thinners. And really, I should wear rubber gloves, but I don't like wearing rubber gloves or any kind of gloves in the workshop. And when I think about it, I don't think I'd want to wear a rubber suit and a gas mask either. By using the electric toothbrush and the other brushes, I don't have to put my fingers in there anymore. Here's the story so far. It's not fully clean, but it's well on the way. This is the cylinder end cover, and as you can see, you can, well, you can see it. Now I can take a closer look at the engine. And underneath the oil, grime and paint, it seems to be quite well made. I'm not going to rush into removing the cylinder cover because I think the problem with the lack of rotation is down to the valve, not the cylinder. In this clip I'm carefully removing the crank pin. Thankfully it's not very tight because my screwdriver is not a good fit in the slot. It's a very fine slot. I will make a special screwdriver for when I reassemble it. As you can see from this clip, the lack of rotation is definitely not the cylinder. There's plenty of play around this area. So I think I'll have a look inside the valve chest. The bolts are rusty, but thankfully they're all coming out quite easily. Jobs like this can suddenly get complicated if the bolts shear off. This is definitely an old Stuart S50 because the cylinder and the components around the cylinder are all made from gunmetal, not cast iron like they are today. Looking at the other end of the engine, there's quite a bit of play in the main bearing and the corner of one of the main bearings has a crack in it. 
The main bearings are not split bearings at all. In fact, even the bolts holding the main bearings to the bed plate are dummies. The main bearings and the bed plate are all part of the same single casting. So why didn't the engine rotate? This is a valve spindle and it's so totally rusted up it's all just broken away and snapped off inside the valve chest. What's left of the valve spindle is so rusted into the drive block it took quite a bit of effort to remove it from the slide valve. I think I'll make a new drive block. Time to have a look at the general condition of things on the engine. When I use some Scotch-Brite on the cylinder cladding it cleans up OK, so this will paint. Now I have a good idea what I need to do. I need to have a meeting with Bob, the owner of the engine, to discuss which way he wants me to proceed. So I put everything in a plastic box, then with a bit of luck I will not lose the parts. Like I did with the drain cocks that I bought for the Hogwarts Castle project. And talking about the Hogwarts Castle, I've moved it onto the bench at the back of the workshop, and this is to make room for a traction engine that's arriving later today. Some viewers may have noticed that I have an action man hanging from the shelf. So why is that? It's not the fact that when I was a child I didn't have an action man, I just had an action man deserter. It's because I use this action man to calculate scales on some of the models that I build. I stand him next to a model, providing the model is the same scale as action man, to just see that everything marries up. And just for convenience, so I know where he is, I hang him from the shelf. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.